So when I think about internet ethics, I think about it from the standpoint that a philosopher uh, thinks about ethics, which is at the deepest level a question about the good life and what it means to live well. Uh, a life that objectively people would look at at the end and say that was a life worth living, that was a life worth choosing. And so when we think about ethics that way and then we think about internet ethics, I think we're asking ourselves what does it mean to live well by means of the internet or in what ways can the internet help us to live well or make it more difficult to live well. So. I think if the internet were simply a tool that we use, like a stapler or um, a, a shoehorn, we wouldn't have to ask this sort of question. But the internet is no longer just a, a minor tool that we use and put down. It's increasingly a medium through which we live our lives uh, to, a, to a very uh, significant extent. And if that's the case, then ethics cannot be a marginal concern. It can't be something we put aside. It has to be something that's central to how we think about the internet. Because if the internet is increasingly a medium through which people live a good portion of their lives, then it has an incredible amount of power to shape whether or not they live well. It doesn't determine that, but it certainly can influence or push them in certain directions, either towards or away from developing the kinds of habits and practices that promote a good life. So I'd like that conversation to start in a serious way and I think we can draw parallels from other fields where this kind of conversation has happened. So for example in uh, the debate about food choices and the institutions that shape uh, people's eating habits and food technology. Increasingly, we all know that we can no longer simply allow these choices to be dictated by the consumer's most immediate, unreflective preferences. The consumer's immediate preferences certainly have to be part of that. Food has to taste good. People have to enjoy eating it. But we also have to make sure that at a basic level, people are being provided with the food choices and encouraged to develop the kinds of eating habits that promote a good life. And that means a life of strength and vitality and energy, um, uh, a, a life of health uh, that one can enjoy actively with others. And some kinds of food choices pull away from that. So this is something I think we recognize, and it's now uh, recognized as a, as a part of the debate about food technology and, um, and food choices that has to happen. I'd like to see that same consciousness emerge with respect to internet ethics so that we all understand that when we design user interfaces, websites, communications channels, apps, that we aren't just thinking about the immediate user preferences and desires, but we're also thinking about meeting the user's desires and needs in a way that promotes a good life. And that's not an easy thing to do, but the first thing that has to happen is that we have a, a conversation about it to which we're committed and which we intend to remain engaged in. So for example, there's a debate now, it's been going on for a few years, it's increasingly uh, uh, becoming um, a central topic of concern over the climate of civic debate, uh, particularly in the United States, but also worldwide, and to what extent internet commenting boards, especially comment boards on major media news sites and outlets, how those are uh, facilitating perhaps the decline in civility and the decline in other civic virtues that are necessary in order for uh, people to live well together in a free democratic society. So the debate about whether anonymous commenting should be allowed, uh, whether we should be making um, uh, uh, or rewarding certain kinds of posts and discouraging other kinds of posts. And then of course there's trade-offs. We have to think about the ways in which we might be inhibiting the freedom of users to express themselves if we design these interfaces in ways that are too controlling. So the conversation has to happen about what does it mean to have a, a good life online and how can we design internet tools and internet applications that will promote a good life in all of the ways that we care about 
civic virtues, personal virtues, intellectual virtues, moral virtues, but also freedom and creativity and expression. And I think that's a conversation that's uh, long overdue.